If you're feeling overwhelmed because you know that you need to declutter a house in order to get it ready to sell, it may be a house that you've inherited. And with that, you've also inherited a lot of personal belongings, everything from clothing to furniture to dishes in the kitchen. And I know what it's like to feel so overwhelmed that you're frozen because you don't know where to start. First, let's focus on why we want to declutter a space. When we are feeling frozen by the overwhelm, if we have a reason why that we can focus on, it helps push us towards that goal. When you're getting a home ready to sell, I think you already know a why. When a space, when a home is decluttered, there isn't as much visual distraction to catch the eye of the home buyer. The home feels more peaceful when there isn't clutter around. It's more attractive and a buyer can insert themselves into the home. They can see the space being a place where they will live and work and play. And when you're getting a home ready to sell, that is the goal is to create a space where the buyer can really insert their life into that space. And as you go through the home to declutter and organize, there are four steps that I want you to keep in mind. Step one is to empty. And let's use a closet as an example. If you are attempting to declutter and organize a closet, it's a good idea just to remove everything out of that closet first. That way you have a blank canvas to begin with. Step two is to choose. What's important? What do you love? What do you use? What do you have to have. You just can't live without. And when you are choosing, I want you to be very selective with what it is that you're choosing to keep. Step three is eliminate. And these are items that you're going to decide if they need to be tossed out and thrown away, or if you're going to donate them or give them to friends or family. This is one of the most difficult steps because it's really easy to hold on to things and to find sentimental value in everything. And and if I have one word of advice for you here, it's just not to get too sentimental. And step four to kind of keep in the back of your mind as I go through the steps in how to get started so that you're not feeling overwhelmed is to organize as you go. After you've decided what items you're going to keep because they're essential to you or because you use them daily, you want to put them away in an organized manner so that they're neat and tidy and there's a little bit of space surrounding them. Keeping those four steps in the back of your mind, let's talk about where to get started when you're feeling overwhelmed. I want you to designate a start zone, which will be your no clutter zone in the house. Make a rule that nothing can be placed in this no clutter zone that is not in use. You may want your designated start zone to be a kitchen countertop or a kitchen table, but every day that you are working to declutter the house, you're going to expand the area around that start zone until the entire house has been decluttered. Remember I said clutter can be very visually distracting and that's what causes the feelings of overwhelm. So if you have this designated area that is a clutter-free zone to start with, just keep your focus on that. And next we move to the flat surfaces of the house. So let's start with a countertop. I have a general rule in a kitchen that when you are selling a house, I want you to pick one kitchen appliance, one kitchen item that you use every day and all the others get taken off of the countertop and put into a different space. As an example, let's take a typical kitchen. A typical kitchen will have a coffee maker, a blender, a toaster and maybe a stack of cookbooks on the countertop. I have this one item rule when it comes to kitchens. If you could choose just one item that you use every day. So for example, for me, it would be the coffee maker would be left on the countertops, but find a home for the blender, the toaster and the stack of cookbooks. The more flat surfaces that are visible to a buyer, the more spacious and organized a home looks. After you've gone through the home and cleared off just one counter, at a time. Now let's take a look at the shelves. This could be a shelf in a closet. This could be cabinet shelves or bookshelves. I want you to empty the shelf, choose what's important and what you want to keep, eliminate all of the other things, and then organize as you place things back. I should put another step in here, and that is to take a moment to celebrate what you've accomplished already so far. You have designated a starting 
no clutter zone. You have cleared off the countertops. You have cleared off shelves one by one. Next, it's time to move on to the drawers. One by one, you will empty the drawer. You will choose what's important and what needs to be kept. You'll eliminate all of the rest. And when you put things back in the drawer, it will be organized and neat. Another step is to visualize. You want to take a few moments in each room to take a look at the room. There are things that may have gravitated there that don't really belong in that room. When you're getting a home ready to sell, the only things that belong on the floor are furniture and rugs. Everything else needs to be removed or put away. And if you're looking at that room and feeling a bit overwhelmed, I want you to break it down into bite-sized chunks. So today, just pick three items. Three items that you're either going to keep and find another place for them, or items that you will donate or toss out. And after those three items have been removed from the room, I want you to celebrate that accomplishment before moving on to the next three items. When I'm feeling overwhelmed because I'm faced with a lot of things to do, I've noticed that when I get things scheduled in my calendar, it really helps eliminate that feeling. And I don't remember if it was Jim Rohn or Zig Ziglar who said this. And if you know who it was, please make sure to comment below so that we give a hat tip and accolades to the person that said this. But they would say, if it doesn't get on the schedule, it doesn't get done. And boy, does that ring true in my life? I know that when I get things on the schedule, I feel much more organized and it is more likely that those items get done. If I could leave you with just a couple more tips, one I hinted at earlier as I was talking, it's just to focus on one spot at a time. Tackle decluttering one spot at a time. You began with a designated start area and you are just going to expand around that area a little bit at a time. And the final tip is equally as important and that is to designate a spot for incoming things like mail or a place to keep receipts, additional paperwork. If you have a designated area for incoming items, you won't clutter up the spots that you've already cleaned.